he may look similar. I will give you that. He may look similar, and I don't know what he looks like, but you have the wrong person. You ran over the wrong person and left him there in the parking lot. Pay close attention. You're about to witness a crime. Did you catch it? You just watched a woman being run over by a car, then lying there for a full minute before a small crowd forms around her to call for help. The crime itself happens at the very beginning of the video. Let's watch again. At the top left, we see a woman suddenly appear. She attempts to run across the street. She's followed and attacked by a large vehicle. Randy, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm Sorry, I'm That's okay. I'm Detective Brown, I'm Black Falls Police Department. You got a second we can talk? Yeah, I do. What's going on? So, I am here <coughs> about an incident that happened on January 18th. Have any idea what I'm talking about? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. If I, you refresh my memory, I probably might. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking, I know you know what this is talking about because I know you've seen it in the news and I know that that you're kind of scared of what's going on and the repercussions, but it's in reference to a vehicle accident in the Winkle parking lot. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you, do you recall what happened there? No idea. Okay. Hmm. I guess, okay. I guess, yeah. I guess let me, let me go back a little bit, okay? I've been investigating this since it happened, okay? okay? I understand there's more to the story than what I know right now, okay? But I also know what happened, okay? okay. I know that your vehicle was used to run somebody over huh. and that you were the driver. Okay. I know those things, okay? All right. I understand there's more to the story on the back side of that, the reasoning to and why. And that's what I'm kind of interested in right now. Would you like to tell me about that? I don't think that's in my best interest, is it? That, what do you mean by that? Uh, I'm, I'm making legal statements here, like, do I need... You always have the ability to have an attorney. What the hell was that? You always have the ability to have an attorney. You always have the ability to have an attorney with you. Right now, you mean, okay. I'm, I'm here having a conversation with you, you're not under arrest, you're not in, in handcuffs, you're not anything. Am I on the record? You are on the record because okay. I'm, because I'm a police officer. Okay, would you like to disclose that the other half of it that I could try to investigate now? Mm, the, you could look up a statement that I made to the Rexford police years ago. Okay. With me and my daughter. Okay, so let me ask you this. You don't want to talk to me, is that correct? I don't think I should. Okay, can you, can you look at this for so me? You should plead the fifth for a moment. Okay. Can you just look at this for me? Mm -hmm. Specifically right up here, okay? Notice that he doesn't get up. Mm -hmm. Snowflake watched the same footage we just watched. Mostly no one is likely to notice the vehicular assault at the beginning of the video on the first viewing. But Snowflake quickly acknowledges seeing that crime on the first viewing, implying that Snowflake either knew immediately where on screen to look for the scene of the accident, 
or that Snowflake has a genius level observation skill set. If you watch Snowflake's performance during this interview, however, you will likely determine that she is no genius in any category. What do you think happened to him? I mean, stop it there. That's mm -hmm. that's the end of it. Okay. I have, no, I have no idea. Okay. Would you like to tell me? Well, I mean, if you want to plead the fifth and we're... Then you have to... Okay. It's, it's not a one-way street, right? I'm not going to give you free information if I'm not also getting information, okay? Okay. I, it's, I mean, it's, it's concerning to me. I don't to anything, but there is a backstory. And, and I don't need, I mean, I don't need you to admit to it. I have your car on, on camera doing it. And you are the exact several witnesses of who it is, right? I'm not here by chance, right? Like, you and I both know I landed here. I mean, the sticker came off the back of the car, all of that, once it hit the news. It's not, it's not like I'm just here just blowing smoke and going after everybody, every Dodge Nitro that's in the, yeah. in any parking lot or registered anybody in Idaho Falls, right? I'm here because I have investigative steps that have led me to here. And the backstory, I am interested. So I can call, were you under Bainbridge then or was it under Morgan or what was it under? It might be under my daughter's name. She's the one that made the statement. Okay. What year was it? Oh, See, it was probably about five years ago. Is it? Is it and it's something that happened in Rexburg, is that correct? Um, well, yeah, I think. In Madison County? In Madison County, yeah. Okay. So is it Madison County Sheriff's or is it Rexburg? Um, it was Madison County, I think, yeah. Okay. So obviously you said you don't want to talk to me anymore, but I do have a question because generally speaking, I think this is mistaken identity. Who is the male that supposedly whatever happened? Peter Medina. Peter Medina. Okay. Would it change the situation? I'll know that you didn't hit Peter Medina. Oh, hell yeah. You didn't. You hit an innocent person awesome. and broke both of his feet, required surgery, and kept him away from his job. Does that does that change the situation? A little bit. Okay. Do you want to talk to me now? Uh, I, I don't know. It, it's up to you. I'm not going to force you to talk to me, but I think that's something you need to know. Yeah. That that, that Peter, what's his last name? Medina. Medina. Geronimo is the person that you hit. A guy that goes to work every day, has never had a run on the law, never done anything bad, goes to work and was simply stopping at the liquor store to get something that his wife requested him to get. And instead he got two broken feet for it. Do you think our anger and our haste and our anger probably uh, overclouds oh, probably the situation? the biggest regret of my life. I failed my daughter. Huh? And, and I investigate those crimes every day. I live with them every day. I mean, I, I have small children. I get that. I live with that. And my heart breaks for you. And I, I will wholeheartedly say the amount of anger that you have towards that first person is the same amount of anger that I would have towards that person if something happened to my child. And I go after these people that do this to their children or their stepchildren or their neighbors or whatever it is. And I do everything in my power to put them away because I don't want that to be my child and I don't want that to be somebody else's child. Right. Well, thank you. And, and, and thank whatever, you. whatever happened here, obviously I don't know, but what Peter is alleged to do is not appropriate. Yeah. But in it anger, but in anger and in haste, we oh, right. must mistake, mistaken identity now has led to a family with their only breadwinner with two, two broken feet. And he works on his feet all day, every day. Had to put a ramp in front of their house for a wheelchair, like all the all these things that happened to them, because in a, a fit of what we think is recognition, anger takes over and we don't see necessarily what exactly is happening. He may look similar. I will give you that. He may look similar, and I don't know what he looks like, but you have the wrong person. You ran over the wrong person and left him there in the parking lot.
Was there anybody else in the car with you? You sure? I'm sure. I don't want to tell you there was other people. Okay. There was other people in the car, though. And while I understand you don't want to tell me, they are complicit to a crime. So I, I know this is a, a crappy situation for you. I'm not. I'm not here to to sugarcoat anything. It looks really bad, right? But it gets worse if you are obstructing an investigation, okay? At most, I'm looking at them to get a witness statement, but they also have information about a felony crime that occurred and they withheld information. That's an issue, right? So I know there's other people in the car and I would like to speak to the other people in the car. Would you be willing to provide that information for me? Um. Would you like to expound on what maybe means? Uh. This detective's body cam is on his chest, as is standard. So why are we looking halfway up at the ceiling? We can see his arm here. His chest is angled way backward, reclining as if he's a king, sleepy off his mid-noon meal. This detective is not only snarky, but he has little respect for the subjects he's interviewing, hopefully only the guilty ones. I don't know. What do you guys think about this detective? Let me know in the pinned comment below. I need to make sure someone's able to take care of my kids. Oh, he here's the deal. I'm, I'm not, regardless, regardless of what you say today, I'm not taking you out of here in handcuffs. Like, I I'm not here to, to march you out in front of your coworkers and everybody else. That would have been surprise them anyway. What's that? <laughs> I said it wouldn't surprise them. I'm always looking for trouble. Well, but, I, I, but I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not here to make your life miserable and add insult to injury, right? Regardless of what you tell me today, you walk out of here and you go back to work. Well, yeah, there's consequences for our actions. There will always be consequences for our actions. That's why we teach our kids, you know, the difference between right and wrong. And I understand your plight. I get it. I understand your plight that you saw somebody and you had a fit of anger and, and you ran somebody over thinking it was this person that did these horrible things to your kid. I can understand that, but it doesn't make it the right choice, right? No, it doesn't. I can sympathize with that, but it doesn't make it the right choice, and there's still consequences for actions. We live in a, a land of, of rules, mm -hmm. and this is, this is why I'm talking to you, to give you the opportunity and the ability to get this all out there, because I think it's been weighing on you. I mean, scraping the, the sticker off as soon as we came out with the, the news release and you saw it, yeah. and, oh, it was awful and, that. and but well, as soon as you did it. I, I was absolutely certain that it was 100%. So I wasn't feeling bad. So you didn't care? Uh, I hope that he hurt every day for the rest of his life. Um, I'm not sure. Like I said, I can sympathize with that and I can understand that. But Geronimo, the fact of the matter is Geronimo is the one that's been hurt and not, and not Peter. And that's, I mean, we took a family of four and changed their entire life because their 50 something year old dad who's been working his whole life who literally is just a hard worker and now he's he's basically crippled until his feet get better and that could be better than you know up to a year right so while i understand your plight there are still consequences for our actions but i'm not i'm not i'm not taking you out of here in handcuffs I will write my report and I will I will follow up with men. How does it go? I need to not talk about it. I'm, I'm in charge of the kitchen. I probably need to go with the Okay. Are you, so you're not going to cooperate and tell me who else is in the vehicle? I need to consult somebody and then can I come make a statement later or something? What do you mean by consult somebody? Uh, a legal somebody. Okay. Do you have one on retainer? No. Okay. I, I make $1,000 a month. Okay. So, I guess what's what's your plan for that? I have no idea. Because find somebody you know. Gen well, generally speaking, in this situation, if you can't afford it, then it just kind of keeps going in a loop and loop and loop and loop. loop. Okay, my. Need to at least do some research myself, I guess. Then. Research for what? On what I should do. Okay, you. I mean, you have the ability to do whatever you you think is right, right? Yeah. If you want to be done talking, then then we can be done talking. I'll quit bugging you and get back to it. Okay, I will say this. And this is not a threat, this is not anything, but not getting cooperation by who else is in the vehicle to visit my investigation will result in search warrants 
and things like that to, to gain that information. And that's not a threat, and that's not trying to coerce you. That's simply the next investigative step is that I will just start laying out search warrants okay, to get to get that information. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're in charge of the kitchen, right? Do you have a phone to call somebody? Uh, my boss is coming back anytime. I'm just... Okay, but do you have your phone on you right now? No, but I can't. Okay. Okay. Well, I will tell you this. As of right now, I am seizing your phone based okay. based off... I know uh, that's where I'm going to find out what it is, okay? And then uh, that way, I guess let's put it this way. I'll do it the... the not, not that what we're talking about is not legal, but I'll do it the legal way so that you don't have to... I guess dime somebody out, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So that when it's all said and done, you can say that you didn't, you didn't tell him who was in the car or whatever else it is. But that that's what that's what's going to happen, okay? Okay. I am concerned about your ability to contact your family if I take your phone. Yeah. Is there a secondary means that you can get a hold of them? I'll find somebody and go buy a home phone, I guess. Well, that's not. I mean, I'll give your phone back to you. That's not. That's not the issue, right? You will get your phone back. As soon as as soon as I process it, you'll get it back. So that could, I mean, we could very well talk about that being today, right? Would that be helpful if I can just get it processed? Then what time are you done working today? At three. Three? It's 11.40 right now? I mean, is that, would that work better for you to process and get it back to you today by the time you leave at three? I'm, I'm really not trying to play tricks with you. I'm trying to work with you. Okay. I know you're upset at me. I know I you're know upset about this situation. Sucks. It does suck. I, like I said, my heart goes out to you. As a parent and, and all that, I get that. But it's not quite the situation we thought it was. So that being said... I'm pretty sure I'm not going to finish work. So just get it back to me when you can. I can't report right now. Is that because you're sh you're afraid of the consequences, or because of what I've t I've told you about who it was? Yeah, both. Both. So what what's going through your head about what what your possible consequences are? Um, I don't want to get into it. I need to go. Let's see what's going on, and then I need to go. Um, I would gladly meet up with you talk later. Yeah. yeah. Think later today, or do you think? Later this week. That's my card, okay? Obviously, Officer Brzee has ability to contact me as well, okay? Um, like I said, Brandy, I'm not, I'm not here to make your life miserable. I'm not here to be rude to you. I'm not here to heavy hand you. I'm not here to tell you that you're a horrible person. I think a mistake was made. I think a horrible mistake was made, and it's gonna, it's gonna be with you for a while. But I think a mistake nonetheless, okay? Yeah, it's gonna be a lifetime. Okay. Snowflake's phone would show no evidence of knowing her victim, further supporting the case for a mistaken identity. Snowflake was ultimately charged for felony aggravated battery and felony leaving the scene of an accident resulting in injury or death. She took a plea deal and got two years to ten. Most interesting to me in this case was Snowflake's mindset. She was willing to murder someone, but only on the condition that said person serendipitously appears in front of her. In other words, she's willing to sacrifice her entire future to murder this person, but she's not willing to put in the work to go find that person. She'll just wait till the opportunity arises, living a normal life in the meanwhile. But her kill switch flips when she sees the person she hates. She has installed in herself a kill on sight protocol which is just insane when you think about it. Imagine walking around town with a to-do checklist in the back of your head. Buy milk. Buy birthday gift from mom. Kill Albert on sight. If you're making a decent income but not investing it, you're letting your money go to waste. Inflation is going to destroy most people's wealth over the coming years, but it doesn't have to happen to you. Put your money to work for you with stock and options. After I started this YouTube channel, I was trading a lot less than before. I have been trading a lot less than before. Before I was trading every day, and now I only make trades of the highest conviction. 
in the last 90 days of my trades, all of my trades have been winners. If you wish to join me, visit the link below. When you sign up, you'll receive an email every time I plan to open a trade. Just copy what I do, and uh, you don't need to spend any time researching investments. I'll even help you get your trading account set up if you don't have one.